Hi, welcome back to part two of Solving Systems with Graphing. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go through and talk about a little bit more of the math. Now, the second page here is designed to have, effectively, in this box, all the big information that you may need to know. So this is going to be like the page that you want to make sure that you keep and that you can refer back to when you're getting stuck. The first side, trying to figure out how much money you and your BFF happens, is to try to give you guys a sense of something. So like people, I've had students refer to it's like, oh, that was like when me and my best friend were raising money, right? Yes. Okay. So it gives it something to tie it to in your brain. I wish I was joking. No, it's actually true. That's how it works. All right. So there's going to be two parts here. So we're going to split it right down the middle. Okay. The first part right here is going to be the basics. So the first big idea here is basics. And notice we have a nice title up in front. So um, first of all, systems of equations. consist of two, now technically you could say or more, so I don't want to lie to you, okay? I'm not like that. Two or more um, lines in the same problem or situation. Obviously, pause where you need to, and that's perfectly fine. So again, like in the previous problem that we had, you and your best friend are raising money to go to see or go to Spain. Okay, same situation. Those lines are related to each other. If I give you guys a different problem, let's say you're raising money to buy a cat, that's not going to have anything. I mean, it could be similar, but that has nothing to do with what the problem is. And so the lines and stuff may be different. Okay. So there's that. So let's actually do this. I'm going to go ahead and underline this because systems of equations is vocabulary that we're going to have. The other one over here is going to be the solution. Okay. And the solution is going to be a point that works for both equations. Okay, just like that five-week $150 point that we did when you and your friend were raising money to go to Spain, right? For actually, it's for the down payment, but you know what I mean. Okay, so there's that. Now, over here, so that's the basics. This is going to be vocabulary that you guys need to know. Over here, number two, okay, is going to be the process of solving by graphing. Okay, so there's point two. And so what we're going to do here is, first step, this, these are going to shock you. Think about what we did. What was the first thing we did? Graph the first line. Step two, I know this is going to become another shock. Graph the second line, right? All right, cool. Step three. And then three... Last part is identify the intersection. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now, somebody had asked me, and this is the first time I had it, hadn't even thought about it, was do we need to go through and do it separately? Do we need to graph the first one first and then graph the second one and then put them both on the same graph? And the answer to that is going to be no. You're going to go ahead. And, I mean, we don't have time for that. Okay? Why graph everything twice? We're going to just graph that. We're just going to do that last step, step three. We're going to graph them both on the same set of axes and go from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and do some more examples here. I apologize for this stray P sitting over here. Apparently, why did that jump? So white. All right. That's gone. All right. So I'm going to graph these in two different colors. This first one up here is going to be blue. Now, everything that we did before in terms of graphing is going to be important. So if you need to do that, please refer back to those videos or look back at your notes. I'm going to review some of them here. So like here, what we're going to do um, is we're going to need to know what our starting point is. Our start, remember, is the number by itself. So in that case here, it's going to be 0, 4. And then my slope is going to equal negative 1 over 2. I always have you guys put the negatives up on the 1. That just works better for me. Um, 
and remember it's always going to be y over x. So we're going to go down 1 in the y direction and 2 over 2 in the x direction, negative 1, etc. So think of those kind of like labels. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that. I'm going to zoom out a touch so we can keep everything on the screen at the same time. Okay, so here's x, here's y. So I'm going to start up here at 0, 4. Remember, y-intercept's always on the y-axis. Okay, so always you're always going to start here if you're doing it off this way. So then I'm going to go down 1 in the y direction and then 2 in the x direction. 1 in the y direction, 2 in the x direction. 1 in the y direction, 2 in the x direction. Plot 3 or 4 points just to make sure everything's safe. I'm going to go ahead and draw this line here somewhat accurately, I hope. Ta-da! Now we're going to do the same thing with the other one. So over here, there's my starting point. So I'm going to start at 0. Don't forget the negative on the 3. And then for your slope here, remember, if you don't have a fraction, we need to turn it into a fraction. And so we're just going to put that as 3 over 1. And again, 3 y's for every 1 x. So again, plot this out. Here's 0, negative 3. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to, for every three y's I go, I'm going to go one x. So I'm going to go up three. So three y's, one x. Three y's, one x. And go there. And we're going to draw a line on that. Do, do, do. Now, some people will say, ask, well, wait, Mr. Hayes, I've already found the point. Do I really need to draw the lines? And the answer is yes. It's just going to be good form. Um, you don't want to look silly while you're doing this, or any sillier than I suppose you think you're feeling right now. So your intersection here is going to be at 2, 3. Remember, intersections always happen x, y, right? And so down here on the notes, actually, I think I have a spot for that. So my solution is 2, 3, okay? So take a second, try the second one on your own. So hit in a second, hit pause, and then come on back and check the solution. All right, you're all set? Here we go. So same idea, I'm going to do two colors here. So here, your starting point should be at 0, negative 4. And your slope should be at, it's going to be 2 over 1. Remember, I'm going to go two y's for every 1x I move over. So let's plot that out. 0, negative 4, oops, x, y, 0, negative 4. So I'm going to go two y's, 1x. 2y's, 1x, 2y's, 1x, etc. Okay? Get rid of those little extra stray spots. And then graph this. I should make that solid, which I will do now. Do, 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 do. And why not match the color I'm here? Okay, so there's the first line. You should have done the same thing with the second one. Okay, so that's going to be this one. So our starting point is at 0, 8. Slope, if I could write it correctly. I don't need parentheses. See, I'm already thinking about lunch, I'm sorry. So negative 1 over 1, so I'm going to go down 1y for every x that I move over. So if I graph that, I'm going to start up here at 2, 4, 6, 8. So one down 1, negative 1y, one 1x, one negative 1y, one 1x, one negative 1y, one 1x, one etc. So there should be my intersection right there. We'll graph it because that's what we do. And boom. Oops. Okay, so then your intersection for here is right there. And that's going to be at the point 4, 4. So again, remember, these points are the, so the solution is it's points that work for both lines. This point right here, actually, this point right here works for both the red and the blue line on this problem. And this point over here, 4, 4, works for both lines there. Every other point on the line works for one, but not the other. We want it to work for both, okay? Hope that's helpful. As always, like, subscribe, comment, do all that other stuff down below. We'll see you next time for a little bit more on what happens with graphing. Bye.